Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Nice to see you here today. I have this bubble wrap envelope and I want to make myself a journal out of this. So perhaps you have something like this laying around somewhere and you want to join me with this project. I want to keep it really, really simple. <laughs> so this envelope is really beautiful by itself, as you can see. And I want to leave this look here as it is. It has this thing here, so you can open it here, of course, and this is still intact. I paid very much attention to not ruining this while I've opened it. And this is a little bit sticky, so if you want to do something like this and you want to use, for example, this as a pocket on your journal cover later, then you could just glue something over here to make sure that um, this is not sticky anymore and that your things that you want to put inside here don't stick to this area. But I want to make my life really easy, so that's the reason why I will now just glue that down. Oh, perhaps we should use double-sided tape for that. And... Um, I mean, instead of cutting this off, yeah, you could also, of course, cut that off and just um, have the opening there or sew it together then or do whatever you like. But I want to have both ends of the cover the same look. So when we have that, um, my plan is to take this and fold that in half. As you can see, I've already done that, so it stays really nicely in place. So the first thing that I wanna do is, I wanna sew over here, but not just sewing. I want to put a piece of fabric here so that also this ugly edge here will be gone in the end. So I'm taking this piece of leftover Tim Holtz fabric. This I got from my dear friend Honey. <laughs> Honey, thank you. This is so cool. And this was, I guess, my first ever piece of Tim Holtz fabric. In the meantime, I have some more pieces and some of you have been so kind and some of you have also sent me some of your own pieces from your collections and that is just so so cute but I have to say <laughs> I'm hoarding them, them a little bit because they are just so beautiful but now this can go here so I am just cutting in here and tearing this off <laughs> let's use double-sided tape again I think that's the best on this material here mm, but I also have to say I will sew over that later additionally so perhaps if you don't have a sewing machine or if you don't want to sew then mm, think about the glue or perhaps try out if you don't if you are not sure ooh, I'm sorry if you are not sure which glue can hold the fabric to this material then you could also of course try that out with a leftover piece That looks ah, wonderful. Look how wonderful this fabric fits this pattern of the of the envelope. That is really cool. I need something to reinforce the spine here because when I take um, a needle and my thread and sew paper in here, then I will sew through this plastic material and I will come out here, go back in here. And this, I mean, it's plastic, yeah? And this bubbly thingy inside, seems not very sturdy to me so i thought about something what i could use to um, reinforce this here and i found something that is really really gorgeous because uh, it has exactly the same um, the right size that i need so first of all i'm going to take my ruler and i will measure the middle so that I later on can know where I have to fold it and where I have to glue this spine piece. Is, you can't see it, is the middle here. And we're going to do this on the other side as well, of course. Why don't you do it like this, Louisa? Okay. Then we are here. So this is the middle 
I found this thing. This comes from a pillowcase and it has these cute buttons here. These are just cool. And look, it has the right height and it has also the right width because this is two centimeters and I'm planning to have two signatures in this journal, meaning <clears throat> here where zero is, the, st the spine is starting and 0 0.5, there's the first signature then, um, 1.5, there's the second signature and here the spine is ending at two centimeters, meaning we have one centimeter in between of the signatures and 0 0.5 centimeters um, before the first signature and after the second signature and I think that's a good thing so now I can just take this here and I think I will attach that with double-sided tape first as well this is a little bit you see <laughs> that could be hard to get it straight but I want to try that and by the way this is um, from a pillowcase that I found in the stash of my grandma and this is something special as you can guess And now I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I will sew around here a little bit. So here we go. <laughs> I'm back from my sewing machine. As you can see, I went a little bit crazy. <laughs> First, I did a zigzag stitching here, but that looked a little bit too wide to me because here is nothing of the print. This was just white before. So I've decided to go with a running stitch over this and I've done that several times as you can see so that we now have this really fancy and <laughs> a little bit wonky stitching. Here on the spine I've made three rectangles also a little bit wonky. I've went around these with a running stitch two times. Here I've went along here and here so that the double-sided tape now holds this down here but it is additionally um, sewn here so that it hopefully stays there forever. I've made a little wild zigzag stitching here and another one that is a little bit hard to see here. And now let's think about the inside part of the spine because this is a little bit wonky that is not the problem but I want to have that a little bit more precise in the inside so that later on my pages are not wonky or peeking out from the journal or something like that that would drive me crazy so we have to put something in here that has the right measurements and where we can sew the signatures onto um, a second reason for that is not only that I, um, I, holy crap, I don't only want to have this like straight, but I also don't want to see the sewing threads here because I like this spine so much. Look, when you do it like so, you can see how the spine looks and this is, is, is this is just cute, isn't it? I mean, it's just an envelope. Wow, what is this? <laughs> so I want to um, have something like a hidden spine but that is not so easy because of this material but we will manage that so uh, don't put it away you have to measure it so I will take my ruler and I will measure here how long this is so this is 24 centimeters and we know what did I say 24 centimeters yeah that's correct and we know that um, this thing is two centimeters so we need two centimeters for the inner part as well 
I have my paper trimmer here and I have taken this piece of relatively flimsy material. This is just some uh, packaging paper. Uh, not paper, mm, packaging material from a box. I think here was some rice or something in. Um, but I don't need such a really sturdy material because I have the envelope, I have um, the fabric additionally, and I will glue some fabric to this as well. <clears throat> if you don't want to glue fabric to this, choose something that is more sturdy than this. So now I'm measuring 24 centimeters here. And then we can cut this off. Ooh. Do it like this. Like so. And then we can do two centimeters. Oh no. Ah, oh, this machine can't do that. Oh no. Um, I will quickly run to my other um, paper cutter. Oh, let's just let's just do it like this. <laughs> Let's just measure it like, like this. That should be possible. So let's make a little mark here and here and here. Let's make a line. That should work. Then I'm going to take this <laughs> to cover that up. Um, and to have this whole thing more sturdy and this happen to have exactly this the right length that is good but I will let's turn that around I will leave a little bit here and here to be able to um, glue that later on really really well so let's shall we take the whole piece I mean how much would that be no, that is too wide for me, and I will tell you why. I want to see this. Um, that might be a little bit strange. This is just the sticker from the shipping, but uh, and it's weird, perhaps, um, that you want to see it. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm weird, <laughs> and I want to see that for some personal reasons, <clears throat> and for the, because of that, I'm just cutting this a little bit more narrow. And then do it like this. Yep, that's good. Okay. So then let's again take some double-sided tape. And let's just put this here. And leave it there for a moment to find the middle here. And then I will just additionally put liquid glue to the tape uh, I'm often doing that if I want to glue something really really secure and sturdy uh, I am taking um, double-sided tape and additionally liquid glue so um, that has a reason which is relatively simple actually with the double-sided tape this thing will stick immediately mm, but with the liquid glue you have um, a little bit of wiggle room I mean only with the tape you wouldn't have that and the liquid glue then after it is in the right place can dry and then it is really like you know sturdy and that will hold really really well has to overlap a little bit because the fabric is a little bit too short. If you want to do that, please, please, please choose a fabric that is just long enough. Don't do something like this because, you know, <laughs> look, <laughs> that is probably not so clever. Okay, so I will let this dry for a moment and prepare my awl and my um, sewing supplies so that we can then sew in the papers oh perhaps i should show you what i have chosen for the signatures and we also have to bring that into the right size louisa <laughs> let's do that while this is dry <laughs> so i have a really neutral papers here because i want to do a lot in this this shall become something like 
Yeah, a mixture out of a junk journal and an art journal. Um, and for that, I need these neutral papers. This is just some matte photo paper, which has the photo paper surface on both sides. I have several of these here, four, I guess. I have taken two black papers. This just comes from a paper pad from a dollar store. It's just really cheap, normal paper. This is some craft paper from the same paper pad, just some brown. And on the same paper pad, <laughs> there also was this white paper. So I thought I'd use some of those. And I also have some of these sheets that are coffee dyed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold these in half. Um, I'm a lucky girl again because look, the height is really good for this. It's probably for my taste a little, little, little bit too short. I mean, if I could choose the size of the paper, I mean, I only have DNA4, yeah, what shall I do? And then I would probably probably do it like this so that it lines up here. But, you know, it's a little bit too short. So I will put it to the center like this and live with this a little bit bigger area here. Normally I wouldn't do that. But in the beginning I thought I could also cut this off to make that shorter, but then this would have had an opening here, the envelope, and I didn't want that. I wanted to leave the envelope exactly like it is with no cutting or something like that. So that's the reason why I did it like this. And when I fold this in half now, let's just do one to see how this works. And I put this in here, then it's a tiny little bit too long, as you can see. <clears throat> so it would peek out here. And that's, of course, not so nice. So I will first fold all of the papers and then I will just cut them off here so that they have the right size to fit in here. Do you know what? I'm, I'm really thinking... Ah, oh, Louise, you are such a nerd. Uh, do you know what I'm just thinking? I'm just thinking if I shall cut it off because this is just the proportion is really nice. When you look at this, it's it's just so long. Yeah, I really like that. But when I now see where the pages will be in the end and you can see that really well when they are still too long. Yeah, you can see this really, really well now. Then we have when it's centered so much on the on the bottom and on the top look that is so much and if i would cut it and sew along there again then i could probably do what i like way way better just do it like this and line it up here so that i mean this would probably be the amount of space that i would leave here it's approximately a little bit more than 0 0.5 centimeters and if I would do it here as well then this would go until here and it would still look very long I mean tall compared to the width yeah I will do that I will do that okay so <laughs> sometimes I'm really thinking about giving my monk a name because uh, he's really a good monk. <laughs> Look, I'm just holding it like this so that you can see it better. Now this distance is way, way better. Look, this looks now really harmonious and it's still a long and slim journal, isn't it? Really cool. Okay, so now I... I'm going to take my papers and I will build two signatures. So let's perhaps start with this. And I think hmm, since my monk doesn't have a name yet, I will do it in exactly the same order um, for each of the sign signatures. So let's start with such a paper and then or... Let's start mm, 
let's start with a white paper. Oh, I just see Barbara at 49 Drankflies has sent me a message. What does she want from me now? <laughs> I have no time, Barbara. I have to make this journal. <laughs> okay, so let's do it like that. And then let's perhaps take one of these craft papers. Put that just to the middle here and to the middle here. Then, yeah, let's just go in this order. Then a black one here and a black one here. Come on. And then perhaps one of these, where are the normal white papers? This and one here. <clears throat> and then let's see how much that already is, because uh, a second ago I realized that it's already relatively, I mean with these it's relatively much. I think I will do one more per signature. Um, let's go with the photo paper because that is to me the most interesting paper of this choice here. Okay, let's see. Yeah, that should be enough. Okay, let's cut that. I will do that with my other paper trimmer because that can handle all of these papers here in uh, one step. And I will leave the signatures like they are, make sure that everything is, you know, in the middle and lined up very well. And then I can just cut here and I have this really straight and nice. And I will do that for both of these, of course. Ta-da! <laughs> okay, so then we are going to take one signature and... I'm centering that because this spine piece is of course a little bit longer now than the pages are uh, yeah because you know this distance that we've talked about the whole time what I want is that it is the same on the top and the bottom just like this then I can take something to make a little mark here so that I know from where to where my signature goes, so that I don't need it here anymore. And now um, I want to measure the holes that I want to put in here to be able to sew the signatures in. And I know that many people use a ruler and now measure this and make lines and oh, that <laughs> drives me crazy when I only think about that. It's, it's driving me crazy. So what I like to do is something really simple. I like to take this kind of paper <coughs> that has these squares. And I know that this, um, let me just cut off the, la uh, the last row here because that sometimes is only um, a half row or yeah, not a total square. Um, I know that on these kind of papers, two of those squares are one centimeter, meaning I don't have to measure anything. When I now take this, I know this is two centimeters, then I can just cut four squares, one, two, three, four, and I have my two centimeters to make my template for the holes. And I will, at the same time, use this exact same template for making the holes into the signatures as well. So that I don't have to measure again and that I don't uh, can't make any mistakes. So now I'm taking this and in this case, I'm lining that up. Ooh, I'm so sorry. I'm lining that up here where I've marked the end of the signature. yeah. So the signature will end here, meaning the template goes until here and not to the very edge here. yeah. It ends here now, where this little mark is. And then when I have that, I just 
do the same here and cut it off exactly where this mark is so that I have the length of the signature now that has a reason I will talk about that in a second then I'm going to take this and I fold it in half and even if I don't need this fold I will make a line so that you can see where it is it's here and then I decide for the holes. In this case, as nearly always with nearly all of my journals, I want to have six holes in total. So I go perhaps here and the other two here. As you can see, I'm eyeballing that totally. So let's put one here. And the next one here and the next one here so that means when i have these oh, i can't see that i'm so sorry the dots are so small i can't make them bigger otherwise i can't see the where the squares uh, where, where these lines are meeting so i need the that point to poke the holes of course so and now i have it like this and then i can just count the squares one two three four five six until the middle is here so that means one two three four five six the next hole goes here <clears throat> and then the same for that one one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight so that goes here and in between here there are four so that goes here for the other signature i can just make a second row of marks here and I leave ooh, I leave two of these uh, squares in between because I know that's a centimeter and this way I have my template made within seconds I mean please imagine how fast that goes when I don't talk and don't explain anything the important thing is that we now make an arrow here so that we know that here's the top and that we don't change uh, the direction of this and i will do that here as well so that i know there's the top yeah so that i don't move anything around otherwise that could get um wonky in the end so then i'm going to take this and i'm placing this here in between of these marks that i've just made of course pay attention to that that you have the top here of this template and the bottom here where you've made the little mark now I have to take it a little bit closer to myself so that I can see what I'm doing and then, then I'm just holding this down uh, I can recommend to practice holding this down instead of using paper clips I mean you could use a paper clip yeah and cl just clip it there but I can recommend to practice this like I'm doing it here because if you put a paper clip here the paper clip makes a little hill into this paper and the spine piece and that can give you problems <clears throat> it can happen that the whole thing gets a little bit wonky and this way you know it's really easy so let's take this off then I'm going to take this little guy here. Um, many of you have asked me where I bought this. I bought that on Amazon years ago. This is, I think it's called Book Cradle, if you want to search for it. On Amazon it's unfortunately not available anymore. I'm really sad, otherwise I would of course link that for you below, but I can't. You could try to find something like this on Etsy. There are some people who are... Uh, hand making these uh, that could be perhaps an option um, or you could also try to build one by yourself of course if you have the skills to do that if you don't have something like this you could also take um, a book for example and open it like so and put the papers in here and then poke into this crease here to be um, able to um, make the holes without ruining your table but uh, yeah this is really handy and now 
this comes in handy as well because I can now take exactly this template and put it in here. I remember that here is the top, here is the top. I'm putting this in here and as you can see it lines up now really well. I can put it here to this little edge and put it in here and then I can see with the holes that I've made before where I make, uh, have to make my holes into the paper now because I can just follow the line of the grid paper. And then I'm poking through here, through all of the holes. Just like this. Take this out. Then I'm going to take my thread and a needle going to make a knot here on the end of the thread. This has to go on the top and then you can just turn it around and then I'm going to start with the first hole here in the first row. Put that in here and then you can see the reason for the knot here. It stays here and then I can just take my first signature I'm leaving these things on here so that nothing can fall apart and I can go into the holes really easily. I'm going into the first hole here on the bottom now and then I come out here and now this is relatively easy. Just go in here, we are just going to the next hole, go out here and then we are going to search for the next hole here and we are going out here. You could also do that in one step of course but that's personal preference. Then we go in here just to the next hole and we are just going from the outside to the inside to the next hole from the inside to the outside to the next hole and so on. Very very easy and very sturdy at the same time. Mm, some of you have seen me sewing some signatures into another journal that was an older video and some of you have written, oh I have never seen um, a binding with six holes. I always only knew the three hole pamphlet stitch which is also of course great um, but I like six holes better especially when a journal is so tall like this it's simply way more sturdy than with only three holes if you have a journal like this for example then a three hole pamphlet stitch is of course just fine um i wouldn't do more than three holes into such a small journal probably no for sure not but uh, with these big pages and you know, I want to have fun for a long time with this journal and that's the reason why I'm doing this with the six holes. <clears throat> and of course, you could do that also with more than two signatures, yeah? That's just always the same thing. So now I'm taking this and I make sure, and it's really helpful to have you all at hand, that this is all really, really tight but not too tight. It helps when you open the signature like this, press your fingers here and just do it like this. Then the thread can go really flat through all of the pages or let's say through all of the holes and then you can also control it here that it lays really really close with no gap here to the fabric and here as well. Yeah, Then it should look like this. And then take the needle and go, we are coming out from here, go into this hole to be able to sew the second signature in. So now we are on the inside again and we can just take this thing back, the second signature, put it here, just secure it here, use the template again. Like so, poke the holes, 
and then we are going to take this and we start on the top here now but we are basically doing exactly the same thing like we've done before we go in and out and in and out through all of these holes what is this what is this believe it or not this only happens on camera really that is <laughs> And I like to go through the first hole and then check this, that you don't have a loop here. And just, you know, pull this a little bit to make sure that it's nice and tight. And then we can go on. Okay, so and then when I'm here at the last hole, I'm just going through one of these areas here or actually underneath and make a little knot I like to do more than one but you know make as many knots as you need that this gets sturdy okay so then we can just cut that off and we have this little thing here now with all of our pages yay that looks already really good. Oh, oh I'm so happy. Okay. <laughs> then we are going to um, imagine this is the front. This goes in here like this. And these are all neutral papers. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if this is still the top now. But if you have, um, for example, images in here that can't be upside down, then pay attention that you still have this for the top here on the top when you glue it down in here like so now. Yeah, otherwise you would have your images upside down and you probably don't want that. So um, I would do the same trick as I've done before with the double sided tape and the liquid glue. I will take this and I just take this to help me. Normally I would just clamp that in this in between of my knees, but then you can't see anything anymore. So I'm trying to get this on here. Just like this. So I'm just measuring where the piece has to go. So that I have the two centimeters of the spine exactly there in the middle so that I have two marks here now so that I can see where I have to put that exactly just double check if that is correct and then take that Let's put the liquid glue on here. And I'm first putting that only to the spine and not to those fabric pieces because this way I can see better what I'm doing. And then I can, you can also, mm, where are my clamps? Take this and clamp this here so that the fabric can't flip over so that it's not annoying you when you um, want to position this now and then I can take this and now I'm lining up this edge here with the marks that I've made here and again oh, I'm just doing it the other way around because here I can see it better but it doesn't matter it's two centimeters and because of the double-sided tape This will stick immediately, but I still have a little, little bit of wiggle room. So that I can make sure that everything is in the right place. Then we take these off. And I like to go over these areas here first. We have these 0 0.5 centimeters of the spine here. 
<clears throat> and go over this here. Turn that around, do the same thing on the other side. Just like this. <clears throat> then we can open that carefully. Let's do it like this. Look how flat they are laying. Oh, <laughs> that is always such a great moment. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we can go in here and just do it like this. And now the liquid glue can dry really properly, but this is already in place yeah i mean if i would tear it i could tear it off yeah but um the double-sided tape helps that i now can go on yeah and i don't have to wait for this to dry you know what i mean <laughs> so let's take double-sided tape for here as well because we've experienced that this works Carefully press that down, and here we go. I will do exactly the same thing here on the other side. This is nice, but it still opens by itself. That is not so nice, but I'm just thinking about something. Um, perhaps that can help. It's opening, of course, because of the bubbles in here. Yeah, This is just something that you can't fold, which would then stay as it is. Yeah, It can't stay folded. But what I could try is, I could try to sew along here with my sewing machine and then I would like destroy the bubbles you can see that here they get really flat there and perhaps that already helps to make make it um, that it stays closed by itself because to be honest I don't want to put a closure to this journal this is just perfect like it is and I hate closures <laughs> so let me try that then we would get a nice sewn edge here as well and then I'm thinking perhaps I should sew along here as well or what do you think let me first do this and then I will decide if I want to have a sewing here as well because then if I would do that we would have a sewing all around here I think it's time my monk needs a name it stays closed <laughs> sometimes it's so good to have a monk and just go with your ideas and just stay close to what you want to do i don't know if that was good english but probably you do you know what i mean this makes me just not only happy but also a little bit proud because i have never done something like this before and it just works it just works it's just perfect it's it goes open a little bit but that's because i have to flatten the pages a little bit it's just because of the paper look that comes up a little bit um, but before i have sewn that um, the material of the envelope itself came up yeah that was not the paper but it was the envelope material look how flat this lays on the table oh, this is so cool I just love it and when I work in it I think this gets even better but this is just perfect it's just perfect and um, the only thing that I have done is I've sewn but from the inside yeah here I've sewn along here two times the first sewing here which you can see here was a little bit too close to the spine that came out on the white fabric here actually and the second line, I went a little bit more to the um, other side so that this goes now here really close to the spine, but through the 
material of the envelope and the same thing here on the back and that gives it also a nice addition here I think that looks really nice and then I decided that I want to go along here with the zigzag stitch as well and also here that makes this way more interesting I don't know if you can see this but um, first I liked this round uh, squishy edge here now it looks way more elegant I would say but this is so cool this is like here's something inside that <laughs> feels really interesting and that makes it even more interesting when this is sewn this is really really cool I hope we will see the next time be creative and stay true to your ideas and to yourself see you the next time bye bye